you know, so like, what does it mean when Nathaniel Drew says like, I'm going to stop having sex. Let's see. And we're going to watch this video together. And I'm sure it's going to be a good one. In a world that places such an emphasis on sex and finding a partner, what happens when you stop trying? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you. For a period of five years of my life, from the ages of 17 to 22, I completely stopped trying. No sex, no dating. I think the place to begin is the fact that it is well documented that young people are having less sex than before, which is a subject that I find fascinating. You know, it's a reflection of our changing world and our changing dynamics between the sexes. And yes, in this video, I'm mainly gonna be talking about heterosexual dynamics between men and women. What I have noticed is that everyone seems to want to say what you should or shouldn't do when it comes to sex. Some people see it as impure, other people see it as sacred. We use very strong, nasty words to shame each other for doing it too much, for not doing it enough. And so I'm doing this precisely because it is so difficult to talk about and because I don't think it should be. I think this should be a normal thing to explore. And this is one of the most important decisions of my life. Bro, I feel like I could not film a video where it was that zoomed up on my face. As a content creator, I'm always impressed when content creators have the camera that zoomed into their face. I just feel like my nose is so big, it would be like the whole shot. You know what I'm saying? I am not who I am today if not for this. This isn't because I don't like sex, because I see sex as sinful, or because I have a low sex drive. This is a very intentional decision, and all the more intentional because of my upbringing. I grew up in a house where my parents were really open about this. You know, they didn't impose any restrictions other than to be, you know, responsible with safe sex. To do this, I'm gonna break this up into three parts. Why doing this kind of thing is so uncommon, why I chose to do this, and what it taught me. Over the last few years of my time on the internet, I've noticed a sort of morbid interest in a meme, a concept, incel, which stands for involuntary celibate. It's referencing a person. Usually oh, incel. Usually a man that maybe wants to have sex, but is unable to find another partner that is willing. I think this is a big fear for a lot of people. Perhaps there is such a morbid fascination around this because it is such a hot topic. This is a fear for a lot of people and sex can really mean uh, validation, as in you are enough. The default assumption seems to be that if you are not having sex, it's because you can't get it or you're not trying hard enough. But what if not having sex was a conscious decision? Not a perfect- I love when people make such a big deal out of not having sex, which is so interesting. Um, I understand it to some extent because everyone has a different drive, but like, it's, it's just like what Kidology and I talked about in our conversation earlier today, where this idea of what sex is, I think, isn't what people want. It's not hard to have sex. You can hire a sex worker. It's, it's not hard to have sex. Go to a dive bar. Someone will sleep with you. Like, I'm sorry. I've seen all kinds of people have sex. It's you want sex in a specific way with a specific person with a specific like bragging right, which is fine. Everybody wants sex the way they want it. That's okay. But I do think we're having a different conversation about like what is sex. And for me, again, it, sex is a means of intimacy, but intimacy doesn't require sex. So I always want intimacy, but that doesn't always mean sex. And I think people to put a lot of emphasis on sex in the same way I did when I was young. When I was young, I also put a huge emphasis on sex because once I was 22 and I had sex, like I... I've had lovers. I've had casual fuck buddies. I've had all these things. It's like you become obsessed with uh, enjoying yourself and the hedonism of it, which is fine. But again, when you find yourself feeling lonely, it's not about sex. And I think people who aren't getting sex think if I just get sex, I'll fix it. Hire a sex worker, be nice to them, pay them well, and you'll still feel lonely after. Because loneliness isn't about sex. That's why when I was on that panel the other day and people were saying like, oh, yeah, you know, I need sex in a relationship. It's like saying I need beer in a relationship. Like, yeah, I love beer. You know what I mean? I drink it every day. I don't drink it every day. But if I – I don't even drink beer. But let's say I drink beer and I drink it every day and one day I couldn't have beer. Am I going to like leave my relationship because I can't have beer or am I going to find like a new way to connect? It feels like sex is intimate and sex could be different, 
But if most couples stop having sex at a certain age and usually just rely on companionship, then what is the pocket of time we're actively having sex that we needed so desperately, right? Like, do you think people in their 80s and 90s, like, yes, some of them are having sex, but lots of them are just focused on the companionship. So are you the category of people that are leaving your partners to go have sex with other people? Or are you leaving, are you the people who are going to stay with your partner and just like grow old together? Again, it's okay if you want sex in your relationship as a primary. I just feel like we put a lot of emphasis on something that you can buy. So it's not about the sex. If you can buy it, it can't be that important. Do you know what I'm saying? That can't be the thing you're looking for. It's, I, I have to assume it's the companionship and the being chosen, right? People cannot be this upset over sex. You can buy sex. So then focus on what you're really upset about. You know what I mean? I think people use sex as a form of validation sometimes. Absolutely. That's what, I'm, yes, I agree. That's what I'm trying to say is like, it's not the sex that they're looking for. It's the validation. It's the intimacy. It's the connection. It's like, yeah, I like sex. But again, we could always buy sex. We could always find sex. There's always somebody who's going to consent to sex in the world. It's just a matter of finding them and whether or not you want to actually have sex with them too. You know? It goes back to that feeling of not being chosen or being undesirable more so than sex. Exactly. That's why I like, I, I don't mind this video and all the conversations around incels, but I feel like incels are missing the freaking point. Been like five years for me, haven't missed it, but I'm not sure yet if it's from trauma or possibly more from being gay than I realize. I'm being more gay than I realize. I mean, you know how it is, girl. I low-key just want someone to cuddle with in bed. I'm just afraid of getting hurt by getting close to people. Fair. Some people don't like to share their intimacy with strangers and that's fine. Yes. But then incels aren't upset that they're not having sex. They're upset they're not sharing intimacy with somebody. It shouldn't be involuntary celibate. It should be involuntary intimacy. You know, intimacy is a restricted activity for sure. And it doesn't always take the form of sex. Incels need to rebrand their I'm not getting enough sex with I'm not getting any intimacy because that's a much fairer argument, but then you have to be okay with the form of intimacy you're getting. And then you have to decide, like, do you feel seen? Being seen is such a powerful form of intimacy. And that is what is so vulnerable about it. You know, I'm watching the Love is Blind season five and there's Aaliyah and Lydia and they have like a really strong bond that's rooted in kind of like false information. So the intimacy is kind of like, confusing because they're bonding as straight girls together and there's like this intimate relationship they're having they're cuddling they're confiding in each other they're crying together there's like so much intimacy in this friendship and of course it like kind of crumbles because there's like a it, false information a little bit of um inappropriate boundaries happening but the intimacy is clear so minus all the negative stuff there is like this female intimacy that happens in girl relationships that <clears throat> is just a girl relationship thing. Like I can't even explain it to you. I've had so much intimate platonic relationships with my girlfriends. It's very powerful and it's honestly great, but it's also, it can, it can feel just as bad as a breakup. Friendships that are intimate can feel just as bad as a romantic breakup. Not, maybe not literally, but kind of. Like when it's not your person, you know, it's different when you lose somebody that's like the love of your life. But if it's like a boyfriend, I think friend intimacy can be even more powerful than that. Do you think incels don't have friends or do you think they have shallow friendships? I think that they think intimacy is only found in sex. And I think they are neglecting the intimacy they could have in friendships. And I think like, again, if you think you can't cuddle with your friends because like you have coomer brain, then yeah, I think that you're missing out on opportunities to seek intimacy. But if you're too straight... And you don't want to seek intimacy through male friends. You can also do it through female friends. And you can also have like intimacy that ends up leading to sex if you want it to. But like people want to feel intimately close to people, platonically or sexually. And that's going to be dependent on the people involved, right? How comfortable are you with your body? How comfortable are you with cuddling? How comfortable are you with talking about your feelings? Indeed, I was speaking on this on the Discord, but if the issue of in uh inceldom was just sex the sex worker would be popping in and out no no incel would exist really totally do you think that red pill incels really want to watch fresh and fit and say they have multiple wives and mistresses I... what do you think red pill wait let me read that again my dyslexia what do you think red pill incels really want 
to who wait who mm. Brittany what do you think red pill incels really want who watch fresh and fit and say they want multiple wives and mistresses I think they want to feel like they're good enough fresh and fit preaches a promise of feeling good enough about yourself through the means of rotating women money and success and those things are so superficial. It is so hedonistically like silly. They'll preach against hedonism, but like, what do you think that is? This is just a different form of it, girls. And cells are just too focused on high school Chad behavior. It's immature worldview. I think some people are really out here struggling though. And I want to figure out if they know they don't have to struggle as much or do they think they always have to? Can you recognize and engage in a type of intimacy if you don't recognize it. Not really, right? You would have to have the tools. Listen, it was just like what Kid Kidology and I were, were talking about on stream today, right? One person will hear me and say like, there's no way she's having this experience. The dilemma is like, if it's not something you know of, of course, you're not going to think it's possible. Just like your parents aren't going to think your life on the internet is possible if they don't understand it, right? But that's the point of bubble hopping. It's the point of saying different cultures live differently. I wonder how these people over here live. And if they can make it work, maybe I can make it work, right? All you're doing is saying, maybe I don't know something about the world. And maybe a planet of 8 billion people are living differently from me. And incels can't do that. Some people cannot imagine that different people are having different life experiences that aren't just in competition with their own. Because incels know some people are having different lived experiences because they know some people are getting laid. But they never think about why they're getting laid and who are they getting laid with and in what capacity are they finding those partners. You know, because again, every reason incels give or red pillars give, like if you're short, if you're poor, if you're fat, if you're blood, you're never going to get laid. Um, Have you been to a D&D dungeon party? Have you been to the dungeon? Everybody love a short king. Everybody love a fat king. Everybody love a poor king. Have you been to Comic-Con? Have you been to Comic-Con? What are you talking about? You know? So again, it's not really the reasons. They just want to admit like it has nothing to do with you being short or fat. Okay? It has to do with you being unlikable. Not unlovable. Unlikable. Or you're picking the wrong people, bro. You're not connecting with people. You know what I mean? I'm telling you. Yes, Jessica. Oh my gosh. I'm not done with this season yet. I'm still so behind, but ooh. Incels put themselves down a lot for intimate or feminine feelings because they believe that's what's holding them back. Exactly. They have the wrong narrative in their heads. I haven't interacted with much incel circles. I wonder if they're also struggling socially in general or if the convo begins and ends with sex. Uh, yes. No. Yes. Uh, yes. Everything. I think they're struggling in so many other areas. They just don't want to have the conversation about it. You know? Yeah. I think so. Permanent one, you know, not a renunciation of sex for your entire life, but for a period of time, a period of time dedicated to other aspects of your life. One of the reasons why I think this is so uncommon is because there's something so blinding about the allure of <laughs> sex or companionship, which is what makes it so tricky. And I think that this will always be the case with things that provide intense pleasure and again, validation. And on top of it, nowadays, we inundate ourselves with imagery, sexual imagery. The things that you see on social media or on the internet are so often so suggestive that in some ways we're desensitized to it. All you have to do is hop on Instagram, right? And you can see essentially an unlimited amount of beautiful women. There is no limit. And of course, I'm saying that as a guy, but you can go on and see just about anything. People with the perfect bodies. And that's not even to speak about the impact of filters, which makes everybody look more beautiful. You can fill your mind with this distraction 24 hours a day. I do have friends that have discovery pages or for you pages that are just wall to wall gorgeous women. Let's and there go. is something unnatural and unsettling about witnessing that all the time. If you're single and not religious, you're not technically doing anything mm. wrong. But does that make it okay? Does that make it right? My theory around why we do this is because it's so incredibly easy to mix up a want with a need. This oh. really- Oh, wants and needs. It began to occur to me when I first witnessed or experienced, I should say, for myself, how short-lived the, the pleasure of 
having sex really is. It's so easy to want it so badly that you think you need it, but you really don't. I have to mention the role of societal pressures on this topic, mm -hmm. as well as all of the media and stories that we consume about love and sex. It's easy to arrive at the conclusion that that is where happiness comes from. You find somebody that completes you and end of story. Well, guess what? I don't think it works that way. I do not operate with the idea that if I just find the right person, I'll finally be happy. And this is probably more than a little corny for me to say, but when it comes to happiness, I am not going to wait around forever for the bus to arrive. I'm just gonna start walking. Before I go any further, I just have to say that I don't think I'd be able to speak openly about any of this stuff if not for years of therapy. Better help. Okay, <clears throat> I think a lot of incels are neurodivergent. I think a lot of people are either neurodivergent and they're not understanding <clears throat> their brain, excuse me, oh my gosh, or they're not even like neurodivergent isn't even their problem. They just, they don't know how to think through things. They don't, they don't know how to problem solve. I think honestly, people are genuinely very bad at problem solving. And as somebody who problem solves all the time and is really frustrated when I'm stuck on a problem, as you guys have just seen, I'm very frustrated when I can't problem solve or get clear answers about my problem solving to see if I'm correct. I will say it's very difficult. And so, you know, you have to go out there and test your theories. And I think the incels aren't even problem solving correctly. They're being told what their answer is. And instead of double checking the math, they're like, yeah, that must be the answer. But two plus two is not five, bros. You have to double check people's answers, even people you trust. And so including yourself. And so again, I think it could just be neurodivergency or other things, but it also, I just think they're bad at problem solving. So much of the problems we're having is our inability to problem solve or face the issue. And again, like you guys watch me openly problem solve shit I'm frustrated with all the time. And it's a journey. And again, I'm sitting here and I'm like, what is the, how do I problem solve this? And again, you won't know until you know but you have to make the effort and it's a long, exhausting effort. And it's so easy just to say, I'm going to give up. It is what it is. People are stupid, whatever. It's not that. It's not that people are shallow and stupid. Something interesting and complicated and nuanced is happening in the world that makes pretty functional people dysfunctional when together. And that starts with you not knowing why or knowing why, right? And so the incel doesn't ever problem solve well enough to realize that they don't even have to be an incel. If you, again, it's like watching um, the Skeppy guy, what a mess, and he says like, oh, I'm going to quit smoking. Don't say you're going to quit smoking, just smoke less, right? Like if you're eating ice cream and you're like, man, I shouldn't eat as much ice cream. You don't have to announce it to the world. Once you put a label on it, like I have to go on a diet, you're basically saying I have a problem with ice cream. If you have a problem with ice cream, now you're contextualizing it differently. It's good if you need to say that. But you know what I mean? Like, that's what you're doing. When you say like, oh, I'm just not going to eat ice cream today. Like, I'm going to make a concerted effort not to just like eat my feelings. You're basically either making a decision to change a lifestyle or to say out loud, I'm having a problem. You know what I mean? And so again, I want to give people the tool to like problem solve better by either like watching me problem solve or giving them tools to how I've problem solved in the past because problem solving is literally what's missing. Hello, ma'am. Oh my gosh, if I can't find the missing link in my understanding of a situation, I'll loop in my head until I can think of a plausible situation. Honestly, so like I'm gonna be real with you. I think time does like show you answers. And so a problem is like you gotta work on it. You can't just ignore it. But then you have to be excited when the answer finally shows up. And it will in due time. I say I will problem solve my problem within 12 months. I think I'll have the answer within 12 months, but I can't give up on trying to problem solve it because if I ignore it or bury it or chalk it up to people being stupid, well, then I'm not going to be ready for the solution when it comes. I'm not going to see it. But if I prepare myself, you know what I mean? I can see that if you don't have any way to connect to people, how easy it would be to go to an incel forum where they share your interpersonal struggles with women to connect to other people, even if you don't fully believe it, for sure. Yeah. Even if I actively don't care emotionally, my brain will intellectualize the situation until I have a tool with explanatory value. Mm-hmm. Could be neurodivergent, could be antisocial personality disorder. Hard to say. Each individual incel is going to be its own case. True. I wonder what root issue links them all other than being incels, root causes and paths. Yeah, it's the mystery. I've definitely learned a lot from watching you problem solve on this channel. It's very much appreciated. Good. Wonderful. Fantastic. I always thought it was mean to make someone deal with me when I can't even deal with myself. Well, 
you know, there's something too that I think you want to respect people's boundaries and deal with your own problems. And then of course we learn by dealing with each other. So the irony is like we do learn best when we do hash it out with people, when we do have relationships, when we do have friendships. Some of my closest friendships I know are close because when we fight, we still come back together. The reason I love my siblings is because it doesn't matter how much we fight, like I'll see you tomorrow. You know, my inner circle, it doesn't matter if we argue over something, like we have a disagreement over politics, like I'll see you tomorrow. But that's the thing. We want to hash it out. Now, not perfectly and not every time. There are certain boundaries I have with my inner circle where I'm like, I'm not going to hash this one out with you because like, I know they're not actually going to change their mind in any capacity or see me. And that's not anyone's fault. Sometimes no matter how hard you try, you can't see somebody. I really believe that. I believe you could only see somebody when you can see someone. But you should try at least. And then if it's not going to work, like chill. Because you'll drive yourself crazy trying to force an issue. And I think it it would cause more harm than good. It shouldn't be too hard to see someone. It should feel magical and easy. Like, oh my gosh, yes. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. Yo, Brittany be working in the middle of the night. Let's go, girl. 2 a.m. almost here. Let's go. We're almost done. We're one more video and then we're done with the night. It's difficult saying, yeah, for a good chunk of my adulthood, I purposely didn't do the thing that makes people feel desirable and also seem desirable. Therapy in many ways has been what has helped me have the confidence to make these decisions and be solid about these decisions. And also to have the courage to question the assumptions that exist on how we should be living our lives, which is why I am thrilled that the sponsor of this video is BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy both more affordable and more accessible, which I fully support. I recognize that traditionally therapy has not been clicked remote. There's just doesn't fit now. Yay, better, help, better help, better help, better help, better help, better help. I'll share the video in the... Honestly, in early adulthood, Chat. I had other priorities that more captured my attention. I do not know anything about using a camera, and that's exactly why I'm trying to use one right now. I would like to learn. And I'm not entirely sure why this was so clear to me, because I, too, care about finding a partner and having a family, uh, like a lot of people. For some reason, it was clear to me that pursuing women was a very high cost activity in terms of energy, time, and resources. I know it's kind of weird to talk about it in that way. Uh, We have all these ideas around love being this just natural, spontaneous thing, right? But sometimes finding love also takes a lot of effort, right? You have to put yourself out there. Resources spent on that are resources I'm not spending on figuring out who I am. And I hate to paint it in such a black and white way because you do learn a ton about yourself. I have learned a ton about myself through relationships that I've had with other people. But there was a period of time where I had a burning desire to figure out who I was, to get clarity on what I want to do in life. And therefore, it just didn't feel like the best way to spend my time, to go to lots of social events or to spend hours a day swiping on apps to eventually, hopefully, find somebody that I can click with. And again, maybe there is a difference here between being a man and a woman in a heterosexual context Mm. in this particular regard because I see a lot of guys investing so much time and energy and resources into this and I just wasn't willing to do that for a a section of my life. For most of my life, there has just been this looming urgency to figure out and find as much meaning as possible in my life. What am I doing here? What is the impact I wanna have? What am I exploring? And this began so early in life. I mean, at the age of four years old, I was asking my grandparents what happens when you die. At 13, I was panicking about how Okay, hold on. I recently broke up with my partner because uh, my partner has sensory issues which make him reject intimacy and I realized I would be unhappy and unsatisfied forever if we stayed together. Okay, I want to say something because I think it might be confusing for people and I don't want them to misunderstand me. This is a really good example of like, this is my belief. When it's the person and you have the thing, this situation would be more reasonable to deal with than if you don't have the thing. And I I mean to say that it's good you broke up because it was probably for your best, right? Like I applaud you for having boundaries in that relationship and saying like, hey, I don't think this is it for me. Because truthfully, if it was it for you, I think this wouldn't be as much of an issue. That's my belief. But I think the fact that like, it's like when people like, again, this is my belief to positively reinforce this breakup, right? I'm not saying this is a good thing. Because when you're with somebody, if their issues and your issues don't complement each other, I think it's a disaster. And I realized this, in my opinion, after I got with my partner, 
because I realized like his issues and my issues complement, but my issues with some people would be the end of it and his issues with some people would be the end of it. But our like uniqueness kind of fits perfectly, which is another plus. So you did the right thing because you weren't fitting, right? And the thing is, is like it's really hard to do that in that situation because you want to be there for someone, but it's really important to choose yourself because in the right moment, choosing yourself will be there. Like you will be there when you've chosen yourself. Choosing yourself will mean staying, but when choosing yourself means leaving, you got to leave, right? It's like, again, I'm saying that's the conundrum of it. Your issues will match. And look, as somebody who's like physical touch is like I need to be touched. I need to physically touch my partner. He also has like sensory issues around being touched. And I will say sometimes it hurts my feelings for like a second when he doesn't want to be touched. It's not that bad though. And it only happens on occasion, like rare. Well, I don't know how, what rarely means like in the world, but you know, in a way that is doable. But I can see why that would be on a spectrum so much more extreme depending on where it goes. Because I know some people like don't want to be touched at all. That would be so hard for me. Like I, I would feel so rejected if I was with somebody who couldn't touch me. Like that would be so hard for my brain. So even having it for like a second go away, totally fair. You know what I mean? It was like, it would be so hard for me to be with somebody who couldn't touch me. It would just be devastating. And so I'm so, I so believe that the right person for you, your, your icks kind of complement each other or like it's, you're able to deal with it. Totally. He was okay about his sensory issues. It was me that decided not to conform. So fair. I applaud this because truly like when I say that I need intimacy in a relationship, usually I do mean like touching or kissing or holding or talking. And so if I, you know, I could live without penetrative sex, but I'm not going to live without being held, you know? So we all have a line. We all have a line, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Quickly, time was passing. This has been a very, very present theme in my life. For as long as I can remember, I've had this. And by the way, sex could be that line for you. For you, you could say, like, I'm never going without sex again, and that's fine. I just think sex, like penetrative sex, I mean, if you break your hips or get in a car accident, feels a little strange to me to leave your partner over that. You know, but like saying, hey, I can't even hug you. Like, I understand that, right? Because that's like, I can't even hug you, right? Thank you for validating me. This this uh, stream made me realize it was the right thing. It is. It is the right thing to do because it's different. It's different saying, because guys, intimacy, like being touched, sensory issues, like all of those things, even sex, like whatever your limit is, you're saying, can we find a person in life that even the things that are hard are easy when we're together. Because it's not about like, oh, like, again, everyone has their line, but that's why you have to talk about it in the dating process, which is so hard. You know what I mean? It's like, we're talking about the rest of our life if you're talking about the rest of your life. You got to make sure that your basics, whatever that means, are met. For me, touch is a basic. I need to be touched. I need to be held. I need like my me time. I always like, you know, if we've gone the whole day without touching, I'll like go to him and be like, hi, I need like my 30 minute cuddle session. Thank you. I like need my touch time. And it's not that I need it all day, though that'd be great. <laughs> but I just need it for like a specific amount of time. If somebody couldn't give me that, that would be so hard. But if somebody, again, we all have our own line. Be good to yourselves because you all have your own line. Passion, this curiosity about telling stories, about making things and sharing them and connecting with people. And as I entered early adulthood, it was finally my chance to figure some of this out. When I looked at things through that lens, going and getting drinks with somebody I had very little in common with just felt so unimportant. Now, of course, I do not believe the idea that you should have yourself fully figured out before you find a partner. That'll never be the case. Your house will never be fully in order. I'm forever a work in progress. I'm still learning about myself and hopefully will be for the rest of my life. But what I'm trying to point to here is that certain kinds of self-knowledge and self-understanding can 
only be developed in solitude when you have that time and space to explore these things. I just think it's really important to step away from distractions and look inwards. I have a view that our lives are actually composed of many little lifetimes, right? Yeah, and moments one in One of time. my lifetimes was this period of several years. Yeah, uh, actually Skeppy, for all his weirdness, made a good point about that yesterday, right? And I, I call it moments in time, like your life is moments of time. And some moments are going to be remembered more than others. And then you're in different parts of your life and you have different relationships. Like 20s Britney was different, but in 20s Britney lifetime, there was also like 10 different Britneys and all these different versions of myself. And oh, I remember being 15 year old Britney and she was living a completely different perceived life than the other Britneys. Um, what about atheist Britney versus agnostic Britney versus spiritual Britney versus religious Britney? All those Britneys are like little lifetime, little moments, you know? Dedicated to intense work and experimentation. And as I've grown into a place of having clarity about these things, about who I am and what I want to do, it has felt as though that lifetime has naturally come to a close and a new one has begun. If you've been following my work for the last few years, this is actually something that you've seen happen in real time. As over the last few years, I've felt this genuine opening up and curiosity and bandwidth to create community, to develop deeper connections, to explore dating. So this period obviously gave me clarity on a few really big things. The first is that I am totally okay with being on my own. Mm. I don't need somebody. Good. I not only don't need to be in a relationship to be happy, but I can live a really full, vibrant life doing my own thing. There are a lot of things in life that provide a deeper sense of joy and meaning than superficial dates or hookups. And on the point about being okay being on your own, I think we'd all like to believe that, but sometimes you just have to experience that for yourself to really believe it, to really know it. Just saying to yourself that you're okay on your own might not be enough. Another huge thing that came out of this time of my life is that I got major clarity on my voice as an artist, as a creator. I had so much time to experiment and try different things out. And even now, thinking back on it, I smile because I'm like, wow, what a time. Mm. During the entire time that I lived in Mexico City, I didn't go on a single date. And that period was marked by just an explosion of experiments artistically and creatively. Mm. I feel like I grew so much in that time period. It was really so fun and so fulfilling to be constantly pushing my boundaries, to be just fully absorbed in what I was doing. And it's not something that I feel I'll ever be able to do to that extent again, especially if I have a family one day. I have to be honest and say that I am proud that I have been able to be prolific and create a large body of work at an early age. And I think True. that's contributed a lot to my self-confidence. And, so and let's be real, this is sexy. Let's be real, this is attractive. Let's be real. I don't think Nathaniel Drew is struggling for dates. He's very attractive. He's got a good career. He's got an awesome like social media presence. Let's be real. His wife is out there. We just have to find her girl. Where would his wife be hanging out in? Honestly, she's probably doing the same thing he's doing. She's probably like focusing on herself. But it is like he's not going to be without. I'm sure there are lots of women in his DMs, right? Um, and this is good. Like this is very attractive. Right? Um, he would be like, I'm, I'm sure a very lovely date. You know, he's like having an introspective journey. He's being trying to be self-aware. He's well-traveled. He knows multiple languages. Like I said, he, you know what I mean? So he is building like an amazing resume for himself to basically prepare himself for the right person, which is kind of dope. Self-belief. I also got clarity on what I'm looking for. Mm. You know, it was a slow realization, but I am looking for something very specific. Yep. And unlike a lot of men who seem to really enjoy the chase, a woman being really beautiful, that alone is just not enough for me. I don't enjoy just pursuing women. There are certain things I'm looking for, like a level of introspection, a willingness to do personal work, emotional work. And yep. I think it was easier for me to get clarity on this by stepping entirely out of the whole dating world and to observe it from the outside and reflect on what I really care about. In retrospect, I really feel like I wasn't missing out on that much. Yes, there are some couples in my life that feel like they have something really special, mm. a really deep connection, but they are in the minority. When I did re-enter mm -hmm. the world of dating yep. and had experiences with some of the shallowness that can be a part of that, it confirmed to me my belief that that is really not what I'm looking for. 
Look, all of this comes back down to the simple idea that I just want to show up as intentionally as I can in my own life. Just because there's this general expectation, you know, that most people do things in this certain way, doesn't mean you have to. Mm. Uh, human beings do all kinds of stuff that doesn't make sense. I'm making this because I genuinely feel that this is an incredibly powerful way, an experiment, if you will, to find some clarity in your own life if you feel like you're lacking that. And he's like putting out a little beacon. He's like, hey, girls, this is what I'm looking for. Hey, girls, hello. Like he's doing a little beacon thing. That's what I did for like three years. I was like, are you my husband? Are you my wife? 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 Somebody remixed that. Like I did that for years. <laughs> meeting people, talking to people, being like, oh, you're kind of introspective. You want to talk to me? Nope. Are you introspective? You want to talk to me? Nope. Are you – and everyone's introspective on their own level, by the way. Everyone, like, very introspective. But there's, like, a thing you're looking for when you're looking for the person. I believe that when you have a solid relationship with yourself, it is so much easier to love others. And as a final point, a message I'd like to leave here. It's easy to do things for the wrong reasons. It's easy to do things that feel good, especially in the short term. But is that the right decision? Mm -hmm. Sometimes life asks us to take a different path, to be different, to not follow the crowd. And I'm learning that that's okay, that sometimes that's the best thing you can do. Life is, in many ways, a journey of learning to be okay not having everyone's approval. This was a step for me in that direction, and I'm glad I took it. pause okay so that's nathaniel drew i linked the video in the chat and things and i want to say like you know nathaniel's interesting he's had a really interesting career on youtube he's got really interesting interviews he's on his own path for sure he even talks about bubbles like bubble hopping going to different places uh he's really well-rounded in so many ways and he would definitely need a specific kind of girl you know and again, he can't just date anybody. See, he knows he's looking for something specific because, well, he's a specific kind of person. Not anybody can be a travel vlogger essayist. Not anybody can move to France and buy an apartment. You know, not anyone. He's an American who immigrated, even though his parents are immigrants, right? Just like me, like, oh my gosh, I never thought I would do this. But he always had an inkling he would leave the U.S. I never had that. You know what I mean? So it's such a different paths, right? So he's probably going to be with a free spirit. He's going to be with somebody who travels with him. He's going to be with somebody who's well-rounded like he is. He's definitely not going to be with an American. No offense. I can't even imagine him with an American. I feel like that's probably not who he's going to be with, but maybe, you know, interesting, interesting. Uh, who asked me about the atheist agnostic thing? Because I think you asked me, how did I go from agnostic to atheist? I actually think I teeter on agnostic atheist. Like, because here's the problem, right? I feel like there's no reason to believe in a God. I feel like believing in a God makes little to no sense. And at the same time, like, I don't know if there's a God. Right? And I don't really believe there's a higher power. And I really, like, I just feel like there's no reason to think there's a God. And at the same time, I understand why you hope there's a God. You know what I mean? So atheist is probably the most accurate word to explain what I think about God. Although I think by technicality I would be an agnostic because I don't know if there's a God. Atheist is saying like, you know there's a God, right? I got to get my friend Steve McRae out here to give us definitions again. I've been so outside of that bubble, right? Um, I think God is less my question, more like ghosts and shit. I just, again, I feel like there's no reason to believe in these things, except you maybe meet people who have encounters with them. I have never had a supernatural experience. My mom asked me this question once and she said, have you had a supernatural experience? I've had technically one possible supernatural experience, but I mostly chalk it up to being asleep or half asleep maybe. I don't know because I thought I was fully awake. But I very much could have been not awake. I thought I was fully awake, but I could have just been dreaming. Like, you know, that place you're in when you're like dreaming but awake. So, you know, when people ask me, like, have you met a ghost or had experiences of the supernatural? Like, no. And the one time I did, I'm pretty sure it was just because I was half asleep. <clears throat> so, you know, there's something to be said about believing something because you have a relationship with it. I just don't have a relationship with like, woo woo stuff like that you know and so it's one of those things where I just 
it would be like I believe in it because I want it to be real like vampires but like I have no reason to think vampires are real you know the closest to supernatural experience I've had is just sleep paralysis like yeah I I used to get sleep paralysis all the time guys I haven't had sleep paralysis in so long now and I don't know why it stopped I used to get it really frequently and then it stopped and I don't know why knock on wood I don't know it changed but I'd really like it to not come back you know um you know and again not so I'm not just like sleep paralysis is literally the worst it's not fun I do not like it I do not like it Sam I am I don't but I will say you know there's something like kind of thrilling about it about it like drugs but at the same time like I don't like it I don't like it I don't like it um anyways interesting video by Nathaniel Drew um you should check out his work he's interesting I go back and forth with his work sometimes I watch it sometimes I don't again he's always kind of tackling issues that relate heavily to people at that stage in life he's I think under 30s trying to find his wife very fair I wonder what he's going to be like when he does I'm so excited for him I'm girl I know he's going to find the perfect girl. I can already see her in my head. It's like, where does she hang out though? She's probably just doing what he's doing. Worrying about him, herself, traveling, doing her thing, you know. In my head, in my life, I'm in bed. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I Dun, 